What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman at The Time Teller. So I don't know about you, but when it comes to watch collecting, I found that my preferences kind of move in shifts, right? Like last year I was obsessed with dress watches. The year before that I was obsessed with chronographs. But ever since I started collecting watches in the first place, it seems like my love for field watches has grown ever stronger and stronger and it's freaking me out. Okay, I cannot stop. I am just obsessed with field watches. Someone help me. But it makes sense that I have this deep rooted connection to field watches because for my Longtime viewers, you'll recall the first automatic watch I ever owned was a Hamilton 9721 LL Bean dial field watch that my dad gave me when I was eight years old and I still have it. And I know, I apologize. I've been talking a lot about field watches on this channel lately. I've had people writing to me, T3 is the only thing you collect nowadays, different kinds of field watches. And no, okay, I collect many different kinds of watches. I appreciate every different kind of watch except for Shinola, Movado, MVMT, Invicta, and probably a few others. But you gotta give me a break, okay? Spring has sprung, it's getting really beautiful here in Southern California, and uh, Connie and I like doing little day hikes, and we even do overlanding adventures in my Jeep Rubicon. If you wanna see our last overlanding trip, click up here and watch that episode, and subscribe to our other channel. That's right, I have a second channel where we talk about Jeep stuff and little adventures, and just my life away from watches. But while Connie and I are going on these little adventures in the Jeep, it's really, really fun wearing a field watch on my wrist, because there's something romantic about wearing a watch for its intended purpose. Like I'm out in the field, and I'm wearing a field watch, it's just really fun. Now ever since I started making these episodes talking about going on these trips and wearing different field watches, I've gotten a lot of people writing to me asking me, what about G-Shocks? Why don't I use a G-Shock in the field? I mean, nowadays that is kind of the modern field watch, right? And although I absolutely love G-Shocks, I've said it a million times, I think every watch collection needs to have a G-Shock in it. There's one huge issue with G-Shocks. I can't wear them in the summer because when it gets really hot, that resin strap, it gives me a rash. Okay, I know it's kind of personal, but it gives me a rash. So this begs the question, is there a way to modify a G-Shock in order for it to accommodate the more sensitive wrists? I should get these babies insured. <laughs> Beautiful. Hmm. It's 3.39 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, so I found a way to turn a G-Shock into a more comfortable, more accommodating, hot weather, outdoors, modern field watch. Okay, so we're gonna get all the functionality, all the durability of a G-Shock without any of that discomfort. How am I gonna do it? Well, the key is in this little envelope, this big envelope. Double wrapped. All right, so some of you probably knew where this episode was going, but we're gonna be looking at some NATO strap adapters for one of my G-Shocks. Now today we're gonna be throwing on one of my favorite G-Shocks, my GX56BB1, the King G-Shock. Uh, we're gonna throw this on a NATO. And maybe, just maybe, I'll finally be able to wear this out in the field when it's hot out without getting a freaking heat rash. It's so embarrassing talking about this in front of the camera. I'm only human, guys, okay? Now, guys, I went with a company called J's and K's. They have really high ratings online. I'm not affiliated with them. I purchased these, uh, all these accessories with my own money, uh, but they're here locally in Los Angeles, so I figured, why not? Let's try them out. But if this process is smooth and if I like it, then I will leave links in the description below and uh, you can check these out for yourself. But again, I'm not affiliated. They didn't even send me these. I bought these. So fingers crossed. All right, so let's turn the camera around, get up close, and I can show you exactly how to change out this kind of uncomfortable factory strap for a more functional, more comfortable NATO strap. Now keep in mind, okay, most G-Shocks don't use a conventional spring bar. Usually they have like a really small 16 millimeter spring bar. And this GX56 BB1, it doesn't use spring bars at all. It actually has four Phillips screws. But fear not, we are prepared. I have a little Phillips screwdriver. And actually, that's really cool. This J's and K's company threw out a little tiny Phillips screwdriver. So uh, yeah, I'm prepared. Let's do it. Okay, so here we have the G-Shock GX56 BB1, also known as the King G-Shock. We're gonna go ahead and throw this on a NATO strap. First, we have to remove these four Phillips screws, okay? Something to keep in mind. Keep those screws, okay? Don't lose them, don't let them roll off your workspace because we're gonna need them to put the adapters back on, okay? So, 
I've never removed these screws before. Again, this kit that I got actually came with its own little mini Phillips. I'm gonna use this one, it's a bit bigger, um, probably a bit easier to uh, work with. So, feels like, uh, there's, there, there's a good amount of resistance, but it's not terrible. Again, I've never had to remove these screws before, so uh, there's probably some tighter tolerances. Interesting. So, looks like the threading only goes up to, like, part way up the screw, and the rest is just uh, to keep the strap in the watch body. So there's only a little bit of threading. Again, we're going to... Uh, going to hold on to these screws because we're going to need them to fasten the adapters back onto the watch. Oh yeah, these aren't these aren't difficult to remove at all. So it doesn't doesn't seem like um, there's going to be any potential to strip the, the uh, heads of the screws. So that's good. Last one. All right, got the last one. So we should, in theory, if I did it properly, we got all four screws. I should be able to just boop, slip the straps off. Very, very cool. That was quite simple, actually. So you don't see this every day. Just the head of a G-Shock. Pretty neat, actually. Let's go ahead and take a look at the adapters, and then we're going to go ahead and throw it on. Uh, man, I'm very excited to wear this thing in the heat without any discomfort. Uh, on a NATO strap, heck yeah. All right, so when we're looking at the head of this G-Shock, we flip it over, we can see there's a good amount of space here, but uh, here is this resin adapter, and um, it looks like it just slides right in, hooks up there, and all we have to do is screw it in, and uh, it will be retained inside the head of the watch. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we can slide uh, the single piece strap through and uh, if all goes well you know I'll be wearing this out and about even when it gets hot guys well looky there pretty simple process why don't we go ahead and throw this newly modified g-shock on the wrist i'm actually very excited about this let's do it all right i've taken off my hamilton khaki field mechanical 38 millimeters uh, i'm gonna switch it out for this one now there's a little bit of a size difference here no matter uh, let's do it oh man check that out now if that doesn't look tough i don't know what does look at that and we get all the functionality of having a single piece strap. You know, if one of these does fail, the G-Shock will still be retained onto the strap with the other adapter. So we get all the benefits of a NATO strap, plus none of the discomfort of, you know, this resin rubber strap that uh, the G-Shocks come on. So um, yeah, dude, look at that. I am so happy with this. The process was super simple. Um, the parts were like, I think 20 bucks. Um, so kind of a no brainer, especially if, I, I know some of you out there will be commenting like, I don't know what you're talking about. The, the G-Shock straps have never given me a problem. But for those of you who are a bit sensitive like me, um, yeah, this is a great alternative. And for those who just enjoy wearing watches on NATOs, hey, why not? I think you should check it out. now. This is the King G-Shock. This is an incredibly durable uh, watch. How could I make it eh, just a little bit tougher? Well, yeah, you throw it on a NATO, or if I can open the box, <laughs> I'm proposing to you guys. Oh yeah, a bull bar, baby. Uh, I know a lot of people have written to me after talking about my 5600. People are like, oh, why don't you wear a bull bar on that thing? Well, I never really considered it, but since I'm kind of doing a little teen, teeny mod, a mini mod on this one, why not go all out and put a, a bull bar, a bumper on here, and uh, we can give it that much more durability and resilience. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, check it out. I now have a roll cage 
a bumper for my G-Shock. So, you know, this just keeps whatever you're bumping up against away from the crystal. Um, so hopefully if you give it a good knock, um, it'll hit this uh, bull bar instead of hitting your crystal. I've never broken the display on any of my G-Shocks and uh, I've been owning G-Shocks my entire life. So I don't know if this is totally necessary, but why not, right? Some added protection there. And it makes it look super cool. So this might be my go-to Jeep watch? I don't know, guys, fill me in. Because I still, you know, when I'm hiking around, I still like wearing um, the, the more traditional field watches. But, I mean, can you really blame me for wanting to throw this one on the wrist? This looks badass. All right, so before I let you guys go, some added kind of bonus footage here. Here's another reason I don't like the factory straps uh, that come on G-Shocks. Look, this is cracking and splitting this is the strap from my DW6600, um, one of the first G-Shocks that I actually stole from my dad way back in the 90s. Um, but it's breaking and cracking so much that like I don't feel confident wearing the G-Shock. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't want this to break and then have me lose the watch. Um, here, it's the other side of the strap. Um, the keeper is, is crumbling. It's just a huge bummer. So. I got another set of adapters for the DW6600 and I'm wearing it on a Hadley Roma Cordura strap. Um, probably going to throw this on a Wrist Candy Watch Club NATO, um, but so cool. I am so, 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 so happy I'm able to wear this watch again. And this set of adapters, they're not resin, they're metal. Super duper durable, guys, I'm so happy. I feel like this just gave me, uh, it allowed me to breathe in some new life into this old G-Shock and uh, this one. This is just even more of a beast now. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy. So guys, um, so far I can recommend this, uh, these J's and K's, um, NATO strap adapters. I'm gonna do another follow-up video after I've worn these out and about so I can kind of tell you how they're wearing. Um, but as far as the process goes, uh, thumbs up for me. And um, But yeah, I'm just one guy. This is one man's opinion. Do any of you have any experience with any of this stuff? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Thank you so much for tuning in. I had a whole lot of fun. I love doing these kind of hands-on uh, videos with you guys. Makes the experience that much more amazing. So thank you guys. Love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you get notified. All that jazz. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Have a good one, guys. All right, well, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to the channel because there's a whole lot more where that came from. Also, I have no idea how YouTube works yet. Hopefully in the future, I'll get the hang of it. But I think there should be some recommended videos for you to watch. There might be one over on this side of the screen. There might be one over on this side of the screen. Who knows where they're gonna be? YouTube's always changing. Life is always changing. You know, there's a lot to learn about life. Um, we'll save this for another episode. Anyway, click one of these videos, watch it, subscribe to the channel. I love you.